Hello and welcome to another Scottish mountain walking guide. In this video I'll explain the route taken while showing a 3D flyover for the route. This is followed by the full walk time lapse with video and commentary from along the way. For today's video I'm climbing Unic Beg and Unic Moor from Glen Nevis. The total distance is 16.9 kilometres with 1,343 metres of ascent. In summer conditions it's expected to take around 6 hours and 30 minutes to walk. Parking is at the Steel Waterfall Car Park at the end of Glen Nevis. Parking is free, there are no height restrictions, you can probably fit around 30 cars. It fills up early and is a popular tourist spot. It is not suitable for motorhomes. The last section of road is single track, it's quite twisty, there are weak bridges and it could be impossible to turn in the car park. It's 2 hours and 50 minutes from Glasgow and 3.5 and hours drive from Edinburgh. You leave the car park at the eastern end where the road ends and the public pass starts. This is quite a well made path. Some sections are quite rocky and a little bit awkward to walk over. It's walking up through the woods and you're gaining altitude all the way. Some parts are quite narrow and some parts are on the edge of a steep drop. But all of it you can keep to the left and keep away from the edge. You'll eventually come to where it opens out in this valley here and you'll see the big waterfall just over here. And this is a steel bridge at this point. So you'll ignore those paths that are going off towards the waterfall and steel bridge. And then just follow the path around. I noticed there was a slight path going across here that could cut the corner. But this is a nice, easy to walk on path. So I followed the path that's obvious. And you'll continue to follow that round until you come to a wooden bridge that goes over the river here. Now you'll see there's a path here before the bridge. And I would actually recommend using that as the descent path. I have plotted the route on OS Maps and I used the automatic route. There is a path here on OS Maps and it's a slightly shorter route but it's not used as much. This path over here is much easier to see and more well defined. For today's walk, crossed over the bridge and immediately after the bridge you turn to your left and follow the path going up the side of this stream. You'll keep going up the side of the stream, you see there's a stream there and the path goes up the side of it. In the video, I actually missed this turn here and I went off up this way a little bit further. I think I went up to about this point and then the path was bending even more to the right, verify my position. So I cut across back onto this path, but you should be keeping closer to the stream. So you continue to follow this path and it is clear and obvious to follow to this point. And it, it continues up and it goes across the side of the mountainside here and then comes up to this bit here. You'll see there's a lot of crags over on the opposite side, but none of this is too difficult. Some of it's a little bit steep, but it's not too bad. You'll come up to this point where it starts to flatten off. And again, you're keeping to the right hand side of this stream and just working your way up. And you should be able to see, as long as it's clear, you'll see the BLAC at the back. And you're aiming for that point. Once you come onto that BLAC, you're then going to head directly north and just follow the path and there is a path here. It wasn't so easy to follow in the snow but when there's no snow there's a clear and obvious path that works its way up and then it bends round to the left. There are some significant cliffs over to the east and to the north here but all of this side and if you keep to the left it, it's all quite easy to ascend and there's no exposure on this side. So follow that path and then keep going along the edge of the ridge basically. Heading west at this point and then you're going to turn here to head more northwest. You can avoid this little top here, keeping to the left of that and keep making your way up and eventually you'll come to a fairly flattish top. On the day I did the walk, the cairn itself was buried under snow. I used the GPS to accurately find where the cairn would be and then from there you continue in the same direction sort of northwest and then you come down it starts to descend this is all quite easy to descend down to around about somewhere down about here it gets a little bit steeper and you just have to zig and zag there's some outcrops of rock that you work your way through but none of it's too difficult not even in the snow you come down to another BLAC and you cross across that uh, heading north and you just gradually rise up this big long slope. It just goes on and on for quite, quite a while. You may spot the path where other people have come up doing this route in reverse and it joins here. And again you continue north until you'll come to quite a large cairn, although it is a fairly flattish summit again. And then from that summit head south, retrace your steps back to this point and then you're going to head slightly southwest and you're aiming for, there is a large cairn at the top of the path that comes up this steep section. 
I was following the footprints of a couple of walkers I talked to that did the route in reverse. This is quite steep, so I had my snow chains on and an ice axe in one hand, and I was just working my way down following their footsteps. But at some point, I lost track of their footsteps, and the snow itself was getting thinner as you descended down here. And it came down and went across, and it went across here. It's fairly steep. Again, it's not really exposed, and you can easily make your way up and down this slope. When you get to the bottom, you'll join quite a clear and obvious path and turn to your left, heading directly south. It's flat for a little bit, and then it starts to descend down to this bowl and flattens off again. Now, this section of the walk is extremely wet. This bit here is wet and boggy. If you've got good boots, it's not too bad. One of the guys that came up the other way, his feet were soaked going through this area. There's a route on the map that goes along the side of the mountain here. And when you look down here, this is also all very wet. So I opted to try and follow this path. It's clearly not used very often. It started off okay. And then as you got around here, I don't know, I lost the path. So I just kept working my way around. It's a bit awkward because you're not on a path. It's a bit rough going. But you make your way around and keep following the, the faint signs of a path if you come across it from time to time. Once you get to this point here, right at the top here, you can see right down to the bridge. From here all the way down, the path is quite good and quite easy to follow. But I would recommend just using the other path. More defined and much easier to follow. Make your way back down to that bridge. Now right here, there, it being quite wet, there'd been a lot of rain recently, and this was a little bit tricky to, to cross over. You've got a very slight section you've got to scramble down, literally a couple of steps, but you do need to use your hands and climb down. And then you cross over some wet and very slippy looking rocks to get across this quite a broad section of the, the river here. Again, that would be avoided if you took the path on the other side. Back down to the bridge, and then you simply follow the path all the way back out the same way that you came up in the morning. Good morning, it's 7am, very end of March. It's a small car park at the very end of Glen Nevis. There's still spaces, but this place gets really busy, especially once all the tourists come along. I'm here to do Unach Beg and Unach Moor. From the car park, you continue in the same direction as the road, heading east and follow the path. It's a good path that takes you up to where it opens out near the waterfalls. So I waited around a bit in the car. It's now 7.40. Only a few more cars will come along. I think most of the visitors will come later in the morning. So if you get here early, you should get parked. Rain's gone off a little bit. It's still raining, but time to get going. This is a really nice walk along this path. It'll gradually rise all the way up. Not quite to the horizon there. It goes up that direction. And then it opens out to the big field where the waterfalls are. Nice place to go for a picnic. path curves all the way up round on the left hand side and comes out of that gap you can see directly ahead. Nice little viewpoint. Just coming to the end of the cliffside walk. I think there's been quite a lot of rain recently. And now it opens up into a big open valley. Just keep going straight ahead and round to the left, following the path. path forks here we want to keep to the left and there's the wire bridge over on the right there if you want to get closer to the waterfall so 
we'll just continue following this path around a little bit across there and you can see the mountain Unach Beg summit is in clouds it's a white pointy bit directly ahead in the centre of the frame maybe slightly to the left just going to head all the way up on the opposite side and to the left of that little point that's top you can see at the front round to the left looks a little bit easier to go up from here we're keeping to the right of that stream that's going right up there and then going up to the centre At this point you want to cross the bridge and then directly after crossing the bridge the path that goes up the mountain leaves on the left hand side. So after crossing the bridge turn left and just follow this path that's going up the side of the stream all the way up there. Looking across at the Ring of Steel, a little bit of blue sky there. And there's Binion Beg and Binion Moor, the easternmost of the Mamors. So right up to this point the path has been very easy to follow, gravel path, wet but not, not difficult to walk up. At this point it turns more to grass and moor. This path now turns a bit to the right and I've got a feeling this is the way I came up last time and I always wanted to try and stick to the path which marks the OS map so I'm going to cut across there's also faint signs of wear going to the left so I want to try and get back onto the path that's on the map I think it goes along that little ridge just ahead So I've just traversed around there from the left. I'm now on the proper path, it's on the west map. So now it's just follow this up until we get to the B lap. So now we do split away from the stream and we're going to head straight up here towards that white patch of snow, a little bit to the left of that top there. You can just see the wear. Yeah. That last section's fairly steep. It's 
it's not exposed there's no real drops it's over the edge there but you don't need to go near that it's a few big steps nothing more than that from here it levels off a little bit and we go still a fair bit to get to the actual bee lac it's beyond that little rocky outcrop there and then from there you go up left up and over the top down and up just hoping that the top clears by the time I get there I'm now at 700 meters in altitude just entering the snow line the summit's around 1220 meters just keep following this up to that bit right in the center of the frame and then curve round to the right slightly pretty much straight ahead With the snow, this section of path is a very narrow path, it's been quite difficult to follow but I know I'm still on it because I can see where the snow is melted away, signs of wear I'm heading just to the right of that rocky bit where the white snow is that looks like where the path goes up just there I've just come along the side of that mountainside there definitely looks worse going down than it did coming up so now it's straight ahead slight curve round to the right when you come to this little stream you just keep to the right and walk all the way up the right hand side of it and then you'll see the BLAC, it's not far from here head straight for that once you're on the BLAC the path goes up to the left really easy path to follow takes you up and over a few tops to the summit which is almost in the clear it's getting closer yeah, lovely walk this one right on the BLAC, 900 meters of altitude from here you turn left and head directly north I think the path kind of bends a little bit to the right and then, then it'll bend to the left not that you can see much of the path under the snow but there is a clear path up here in the rocks a bit of a drop off to the east I'm not going to stand in the snow there's some light cloud just coming in closer to the edge so bend to the left and just keep following up this edge but not too close a cornice ball of snow just going up here you can see I'm just coming up to an edge so I want to start turning to the left and just go directly up I'm just going to skip that little top directly ahead you can just go around to the left of it it would go up and down slightly 
and then just keep going straight ahead to get to the first Monroe at Unach Beg. From here, I want to head directly west for about 500 metres and then I'll bend northwest for about 700 metres. So a little bit over a kilometre to the summit. There's a little top back there. I kind of went round it a little bit, but in the snow and the cloud, depth and distance is quite difficult to judge, so I was a lot closer to it than I actually intended. But once you get to the ridge and it drops off, you know to turn to the left. Wind's starting to pick up a bit. I've put some extra clothing on, it's getting a bit cold. 200 metres of altitude left to climb, and about 800 metres away to the summit of Unach Beg. It flattens off here for about 150 metres, we're just going to go along pretty much level and then there's a final steep ascent to the summit of Unachberg. Still heading west at this point, just before it turns northwest. A lot of snow cornicing over the edges here and some really large cliffs and drops. So just keep to the left, as long as you're walking over the rocky stuff you should be okay. The white stuff could be a bit more dangerous. So now you just keep that drop on your right hand side. I think straight ahead I can cut that little top there out just by going straight ahead and a little bit to the left of it. But then after that it is going up the edge basically, keeping to the left, there's no, just getting a view down there, there's no ridiculously steep drops on the left but there are cliffs and crags on the right. Sometimes I think it's easier when you can't see where you're going. This looks a lot bigger in real life than it does on the map. It's looking to my right, this is looking straight up, 50 metres of altitude and about 300 metres of distance. It's pretty much straight up there but it's really difficult to see. I'm actually going to the left slightly because there's rocks that I can visualise and follow to get up there. It's starting to level off now. The edge is just there, maybe 50 metres away. Summit's about 120 metres straight ahead. It goes up slightly, but not much more now to the top. I'm standing directly on the top of the summit cairn for Unich Beg. Just too much snow, it's been buried. You want to keep away from that edge there to the north, could be easily cornered over. But the summit on this one is a fairly large flattish plateau. From here I want to continue northwest, it kind of goes a little bit more north then more northwest, so it curves round to the left. But keep away from the, there's cliffs and crevasses straight over directly north. So. We want to keep to the left, should be a reasonably gentle 
um, decline. And with this snow, it should be quite easy to just to walk back down, similar to the ascent back there. So you can see the edge there where the drop is. Keep to the left and just go straight ahead. A little break in the clouds. Now it does narrow ahead with crags on both left and right, so you really need to make sure you go right down the middle of this bit ahead, which in itself is easy enough, but it's just if you get off the path, you could get into a little bit of difficulty. You can also see a huge cornice ahead, so I want to make sure I keep to the left with that. So when you come to this rock, just make your way down to the left of it and then zigzag back across and we'll go up the other side. The descent route goes down that ridge over there. I've never done it. It's a little bit round the corner, so not quite the edge you can see just now. It takes you down to that BLAC and then just walk all the way out. Last time I did this, I actually descended the same way I went up. Just it was a, that section down there is notoriously wet and boggy. So we'll see. A couple of people ahead. Hopefully they ascended up the way I'm going down, which will make it easier to follow their path. The descent down here is not difficult. Looks a bit dodgy, but there's plenty of zigging and zagging through the rocks. Nothing, nothing too steep. And now we're almost in this BLAC and it's up into the cloud again. It's about one kilometre and 120 metres of ascent to the summit. So not much between these two. So it should be there quite quickly. Just bright enough, very slightly. A little bit of a view down there. And now I've got a set of walking tracks. I've got a set of footprints to follow now, so that'll make it nice and easy. I was just talking to those two guys. They came up the way I'm planning to descend. They reckon it's a little bit steep, but it should be easy to descend. So we'll go down that way and through the waterlogged peat bog. See what that's like. The summit of Unach Moor. Got a little bit of snow at the moment. But it's nice and calm, no wind whatsoever. <laughs> and now there's a breeze. So from the summit, you retrace your steps, head directly south, and then in a little while, We'll turn to the west, turn to the right, and go down quite a steep ridge. It takes us down to the Bielach between here and Canmore Jerrig. And from there you just turn left and go down the swampy bog. All the way back down to the path I started on this morning. It's getting slightly brighter. It's kind of snow struck hill. It's getting a bit heavier. 
I've just checked the weather. If I wait around 20 minutes, it's meant to clear up a little bit in visibility of four kilometers. And if you wait until four o'clock, it's meant to be bright sunshine, but there's no way I'm doing that. It's taken five hours to get to here. See, it's just getting a bit brighter. Oh, the wind's picking up as well. All right, so I'm gonna head back follow all these nice footprints, that'll take me down to the descent point. Looks like I'm at the spot where I wanted to turn to the right. There's a very small cairn there. Uh, I'll just follow these footsteps and make sure, and the way up I saw a set off coming from my left in the approach. And here we can see where the two tracks split. So I'm keeping to the right. It's just clearing up a little bit. At this point, this path is not far off the one I ascended, which is just over there, about 20 meters. So it's very close, but it's going to turn quite sharply to the right fairly soon. There's the Bielach between here and Unach Beg. <laughs> it looks quite steep, but it was quite easy to come down. And now I'm going off to the right. Looking back up towards the summit of Unach Moor and then across there is Camor Jerig. Summit's in the cloud. You can see a good part of the ridge up towards Camor Jerig. Can't see anything of Ben Nevis. There's a nice big cairn to mark the top of this route up the steep section. So at least you know you're starting at the right place. I think I'll put my snow chains on for this and get my ice axe out just in case. Oh, it's quite high up. I hope this is easier than it looks, because it looks really steep. The good news is that from a gradient perspective, it doesn't look like it gets any steeper on the map. I'm pretty sure I would not have done this had I not had a set of footprints to follow. I would have just retraced my own steps. In the summertime, I'm sure this is fine because you'll have an easy path to follow. But with the snow, and with the snow chains, you feel a bit like a Shibuto player. Big lumps of round snow in the bottom of your boots. I don't know if they help or not. That'll keep making my way down. It's not too much further. I've just checked the map and my position with the GPS and I'm way off the route. The route goes down over to the right. I was just following the footsteps of the two guys that came up before. So you can get up and down this bit, that's clear. And looking down it doesn't look like there's much to go but when you look across to the other side and try and gauge sort of level to where you are, it is miles. 
So I'm just going to keep zigging and zagging down here and then come out to the Bela. And from there, go down and you can even see from here just how wet that whole place is down there. But no more uphill, that's a plus. I'm probably going to take the snow chains off. They keep balling up with snow, it's really difficult to walk in them. Just looking back up, if you're doing this, you want to stay a bit more to the left. But it wasn't actually that bad coming down there. It's not ridiculously steep. And there's no big drops. So now just head down to the path. You can even see it there, right in the middle of the Bela. Turn left. And make our way through the rather wet, peaty bog. Unfortunately, this is every bit as bad as people say. You're basically walking down one big river. But the views aren't bad. path goes down there but it's so wet so I'm keeping to the high ground. I was watching the walkers ahead and they went over the edge just there. I was trying to get a video of them before they went out of sight but they went over to the left hand side of the lowest point ahead. So that's where I'm heading to. When you come to this river that leaves the valley we've been walking through, you want to make sure you cross over to the other side. The path cuts across straight ahead. There is a path here that goes down to the right, but that would be quite a detour around. So cross over and go over there. So I'm now on that path I talked about. It's not the most obvious, but it goes straight ahead here and then cuts down. There's supposed to be a path around here. I lost track of where the, the where was at that landslide back there. GPS says I'm on the path, but there's no visible signs really. So just keep working your way around. The Garmin map does show that other path that I left earlier that goes down there, which is where those two other guys that went down. This path, which is almost non-existent, goes round here and then curves down. This path apparently goes round the side here, curves round. Doesn't go quite as close to that river as you think, it stays about 20 metres above it, so that's around the edge up there. Now you can see the Camel Jerigaret. You can almost see the top of Ben Nevis, at least this side of it. Many years ago, we climbed Camel Jerig and Ben Nevis going up that face. There was a lot more snow 
this whole valley was like three foot of snow. It just looks impossible. Don't know what we were thinking. And it's getting a little bit brighter. So I'm persisting with this high path that's um, completely unrecognisable. I'll use the GPS to make sure I come out at the very top of the path once it goes over the edge. Hopefully then it'll be easier to follow. Sun's coming out. That's some view. This looks like the path. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's used very much. It's a clear sign of a path, so we'll follow it round. Been walking for over seven hours now. You can see the path on the other side quite clearly. You cannot see the path on this side <laughs> at all. But I'm here. From here you just go straight ahead there and down the other side of this steep drop and then make your way all the way back down to that bridge. Keeping to the left of this river. It's 3 p.m. Time for a cup of tea. This path is a lot better once you get to that cliff up there. Still not the most defined path, but it's easy enough to follow. A little bit wet and squidgy. As long as you've got the right footwear on, not a problem. Down to the bridge, turn right, and it's just follow the path straight back to the car park. Continue straight down here and you're going to cross the stream on the left before it joins the larger river that's on the right. But it's right at where the two connect. You cross over to the far side of the bank, then go down and cross over the footbridge. So you go down here, a little bit steep, down to the river, cross there, go across that grassy bit and then across there. With all the rain, it looks a little bit more difficult than it would normally be, but it should be quite doable. So I made it across without getting my feet wet. Really don't like those rocks, they're a bit slippy. So the final stretch, just follow the path down here. It'll then go down through the gully along the sort of high cliff side path. It goes through the woods, but there's no decision making left. You just follow this straight back to the car park. Thank you. 
There is a little bit of up and down on this path. I think it's all downhill now to the car park. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll show you more of Scotland in the next one. That's me back at the car park. Total time taken since leaving the car park is eight and a half hours. As you can see, car park looks a fair bit busier now. And this is quiet season. So, bye for now. Thank you.